Welcome to week two, lesson three of the Store Manager Academy. I'm Stephen Farrell. I'll be taking you through this lesson today. We're going to be talking about how to have difficult conversations, when to have them, when not to have them, where to have them, and just a step-by-step -step process of making sure you have an effective, difficult conversation that results in one of two outcomes. First outcome is they follow your expectations going forward and you have a great employee. Or well, the second, they give you your, your two weeks notice. Now, I, now, no on the surface, that seems pretty harsh, but I'm gonna walk you through this process step by step so you fully understand how you can get the most out of your employees through a difficult conversation and why a difficult conversation can actually help you have some of the best employees on your team. But you have to have these conversations the right way and I'm gonna break it down for you. But before I do that, I need to ask a difficult question to you. Why are difficult conversations so difficult to have? Why do we put them off? Why do you put them off? It's a good question, right? Maybe you've had a difficult conversation in the past and it didn't turn out the way you thought it would. Maybe it ruined a relationship. Maybe you lost a couple employees over it. And maybe you lost your job because of it. I don't know what difficult conversation you've had in the past or which one you're facing today, but what I can tell you is if you handle it appropriately, you'll be in a lot better shape and so will, you, so will your store. So let's move on to when, where, why, how, right? Uh, first things first though, <laughs> if you need to have a difficult conversation, if you're putting one off, you need, at the end of this training, I want you to go and have that conversation. Period. If you're putting it off, you need to have it. You need to have it now. But before you do that, I need to caution you a few things. First off, don't put off the conversation because it's going to stem. It's going to get worse and it could cause a lot more damage just putting it off one day. And putting it off a week or longer can have ramifications that could hurt your business for the long term. Now, I want to caution you, don't just jump into a difficult conversation because I just told you you need to have one, all right? If you're red hot, do not have that difficult conversation. You will say things based on emotion, not on fact, not on principle, that could cost you your job, that could tarnish that relationship, could tarnish that, that or could, could cause you to lose that employee when maybe you didn't have to. So if you are really angry, Go through a cool down period, take a deep breath, lay out the facts, try to put yourself in the employee's shoes. Why did they behave the way they did or why didn't they do what they were supposed to do? Really just break it down line by line before you have that conversation. Next, you need to determine if this conversation needs to be have privately or if it's a in the moment training. Now, this is, we're talking about difficult conversations. So let's just say we've already excluded the, the, the thought of having an in the moment training. You've already trained with them on the floor. This is an issue that needs to be addressed privately. And then you need to determine what disciplinary actions you're going to take, what improvement plan, what improvement conversation are you going to put forth. Now, we all want to avoid conflict. We all want to be the nice guy, right? Or the nice gal. But when is enough enough? When is it enough? You need to ask yourself that question. And when you know, you know when enough is enough. You know when they've crossed that line. When you've drawn a red line and that employee crossed it, you know it. It's pretty obvious they walked right past the line. There's no way around it. So you've got to bring them in, you've got to have that conversation. Now I want you, I, I want, I want you again to think there's two outcomes from difficult conversation. One, the employee follows your directive going forward and your expectations, or two, the employee is going to give you their two weeks notice. I know that seems harsh, but that is going to be one of two outcomes after this conversation. You need to have that in your mind. Either this employee is going to perform to your expectations, going to follow your directive, or they don't want to work for you. Obviously, if they're not following your expectations, if they're not meeting your expectations purposely, they need to go. And you're going to help them 
determine that they need to go. You're going to help them give their notice instead of you having to fire them. Now, let's break down the conversation step by step, how to have it, where to have it, when to have it. First thing you need to do is actually schedule a time for you and that employee to meet. And if you, uh, if your company requires you have a witness, make sure you get that witness ahead of time. And then tell that employee, the one that you're going to have a difficult conversation with, give them enough lead time to prepare. And there's a reason why, okay? Even if it's two hours ahead of time, I like to give them, you know, at least two hours. I like to give them a day if I can. I walk up and say, hey, Tim, I need to have a, need to have a chat with you later this afternoon, say 2 p.m. when you get back from your break. Uh, I need about 30 minutes of your time. Can you meet me in my office at 2 p.m.? What does that do to Tim's mind? What, what is he thinking about? Crap, he knows he's not performing or he knows he's been misbehaving or not following your directive lately. So he knows this conversation is not going to be a good one. So he's going to be thinking about what he's going to say, what you're going to say over the next couple hours, which is good. Do you want those emotions? Do you want him to be thinking about it? Because you don't want to catch him off guard. When he comes, he or she come into that meeting, you need them to already be thinking about what you're going to talk about so you guys can so you can actually peel back that onion. I talked about in the last in in, a, in week one about peeling back the onion until you get to the core. Same concept of holding a difficult conversation. You want them to you want to be able to peel back that onion to get to the root cause of why they're not performing or why they're not following you. What maybe you know why aren't why don't they respect their team leader, you, and so on and so forth. So give them time to think about it. The more time, the better. <laughs> Next, you need to review the associate file in detail. And maybe this is a new store you've taken over, so you don't know this employee's background. Or maybe, uh, you know, this employee's been off the radar for a while. And so there's been possible past performance issues that you're just unaware of or you may have forgotten. So ju jump into their employee file. See if there's a pattern of misbehavior. See if there's a pattern of breaking policy. See if there's a pattern of not following company directive or manager directive. If you nine times out of ten, there's going to be a pattern. Okay, and if there isn't, you're going to take that into consideration when you're putting forth a disciplinary action or a performance improvement plan. And if there is a pattern, maybe there's a performance improvement plan already in the associate file that clearly states that they don't improve on these performance standards. They'll no longer be working for the company. Boom, you just got an easy way to get rid of that employee if they decide they don't want to follow your directive. So review the fi file in detail, see if there's, this has been an ongoing issue, and then start building up your own improvement plan or repercussions that you're going to get ready for and discuss. Next, whenever possible, I can't emphasize this enough, some companies require it, some don't, but have somebody of the opposite sex who is in a management role, be in the room with you. For, you. You never want a he said, she said moment, especially in court or when you have to end up letting that employee go. You know, maybe they, they send some allegations your way and who's there to, who's there to prove it? It's your word, your, your word against theirs. Who has the best story? So you need someone in the room at, who's the opposite sex, so there's no sexist, no bias there. That's in a management level. That's in a higher management level than the employee that you're talking to, because sometimes it might be a manager. And then you need that person to take notes. And you want them to not be, you don't want to be you here, and then the person taking notes here, and then the bad guy there. Not the bad guy. The employee that's in trouble, okay? That is too much pressure. No, it should be the opposite. So I'm going to be here. The employee that's in trouble is right there, and the employee taking notes is just hit, just to the corner of where that employee is. So just sitting to the you know to the left or right of that person. So they're really out of view. So it's just you and that and that employee, you and that person that's that you're talking with, and the person in the corner taking notes. Try to do that so it's not as awkward. So you can get that your employee to open up and get to the root cause and see if you can't come to a resolution. Now, before the meeting though, we're talking about how to set up the meeting. 
you go and look through the employee file, you get someone to help out to, to take notes of the opposite sex that's in a higher management position than that person. Next, you need to actually get out pen and paper and write a clear objective. What is my objective of this conversation? What are you going to discuss? What is the desired outcome? Do I want my employee to improve their performance? Or have they been given so many chances that I want them to quit? I want to get rid of them. What is the desired outcome? You need to be very clear about that. You need to write it down. Next, write out your questions. Unless you've had a difficult conversation a thousand times, if you haven't written it out, if you haven't had over a thousand difficult conversations in this point in your career, you do not want to go into this just winging it. I know some of you are good at winging it, but this is not the scenario. This is not the situation that you want to be in to be winging it because it can hurt you down the road and can actually cost you your job. So make sure you write down the questions you're going to ask. So for example, let's just say you had an associate drop the F-bomb in front of a customer right at the register in a negative way. Simple question. Why did you drop the F-bomb in front of this customer, in front of all of our customers? Simple question. Maybe this employee just refused to do their closing duties. Why did you refuse to do your closing duties last night? Simple question. Why have you stopped offering extended warranties? Simple question. I notice you're coming in 10 minutes late. 10 minutes late, two or three times per week. Why? Simple questions. Okay? Write your questions out. And I would say you take that one step further because if you're if you were like me, they may have come back with an answer that you're like, oh man, like, how do I respond to that? So I would take it one step further. I encourage you to give this a try. Write out three answers that the associate would, 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 would the probability of them giving you those three answers. So I would give like a middle range average answer. You know, I would put in, I'd, I'd write down the answer. I think they're going to give me on a high level. And then on a low extreme level, like where they start yelling and cussing at you. So write down the three possible answers. So let's just use the being late three times a week, 10 minutes or more. I'm going to write, okay, based on what I know about John is he's late all the time. He's, he's got a pretty negative attitude about it. And when I've approached him before, he's kind of just brushed it off like it's no big deal. So I'm going to write down one of his possible answers is going to be, I didn't think it was a big deal, Stephen. I, you know, I try to get up on time. Sometimes I don't. I don't, I don't know what you, what you want of me. So I'm going to write that down. No big deal. I'm not going to write out the full answer. I'm just going to put maybe in quotations, no big deal. Then I'm going to put, got angry and, 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 you know, got angry. Okay. Got angry. Or I'm going to put was sorrowful. Three different scenarios. Pick the one, that fit, pick the three that fit that employee best. And then you need to even put it on paper again. How am I going to respond to these three answers that this employee, this employee gives me? If he's irate with me, how am I going to handle it? How are you going to handle an irate, irate employee? If he's just nonchalant about it, how are you going to handle that? Well, you're going to peel back the onion some more. So you know, tell me, why, why do you think that's not a big deal? Well, everyone else is late. So I, why do I you need to show up on time? No one else gets in trouble. I, I'm, I'm quite, quite frankly shocked that I'm in the office today getting in trouble when everyone else is out there showing up late and they never get in trouble. Okay, valid point. Let's talk about it. So you've got to be prepared. Again, be prepared. Write out your, all your questions. Write out your answers. Write out some of the top one to three possibilities of their responses. And I... And I promise you, it's going to make a world of a difference in the quality of the conversation that you have, as well as the control. You need to be able to control this conversation so you can maximize the outcome. Does that makes sense? Don't let emotion control. I remember having a difficult conversation. I was just, just noticeably shaky, right? Because my, my, and my heart felt like it just was trying to jump out of my chest. I was really sweaty. 
it, that those are just to- common nervousness, right? I was nervous because I didn't know how to have a conversation. So I wasn't able to control that conversation and it went south and I lost that employee that could have been a good employee and I lost my composure. That's just things you don't want to do. You don't want to lose control of your composure. You don't want to lose control of the conversation. You got to remember, you're bringing this employee in to reprimand. This is not outside of the normal coaching. This they have done, they have been purposely going against your directive for a while now, or maybe it's been a couple times. You need to have that serious conversation. You've got to turn it around. You've got to correct it. Just like we talked about in week one, you have one bad associate that's working 25 hours a week. They could be potentially negatively impacting over 1,600 customers per month. How long will your business last when you have one employee negatively impacting 1,600 customers per month? And if you have three, you're in trouble. Your business is in real trouble. Remember that. All right, now, some of the, um, moving on here to my slides, I want you to really think through the conversation. After you've written down all the possible answers and questions that you're going to have. Just take a step back, look at your questions, look at the answers you think they're going to give, and think think through it. Does this make sense? How, how am I going to handle this scenario? How can I handle that scenario? Be prepared. It's going to help you keep your composures. Now, you're going to have the actual meeting, okay? And you're going to go through your questions, and you're going to start pinpointing the answers like, ooh, I guessed that one. I knew he was going to say that. <laughs> It's a lot of fun. You'll be able to, it's amazing how you start having a fun with these conversations instead of being a nervous wreck. Then you're going to, once you determine the root cause of why that employee did what they did or didn't do, you're going to document the policy violation if that if that's the case, if they broke a policy or or failed to follow your directive or another manager's directive. So cl- clearly write that down, what they broke or violated. And or the, st- or the standards they're not meeting. And then you want to write out your expectations and of them following the policy or your directive or or your man or your other manager's directive. You need to clearly write out what it is that they need to do. But more importantly, you need to really just get sit down one-on-one and say, this is why this policy, or this is why this directive is so important to me. And this is why it's so important that we execute for our customers. This is why it's so important for our overall organization. And that's why I believe it should be important to you. Do you agree with me? Is this important to you now that we've had this conversation? What's that employee going to say? No. Maybe. Had that happen. And I and I've got rid of them pretty quickly. But most of them are going to say, wow, I, Stephen, I didn't realize it was that important. I apologize. I want to make it right. Great. That brings us on to the next step. Performance improvement plan. I've got a document you can download that you're seeing right here on the screen. Maybe your company already provides a performance improvement plan. We call it a PIP, P-I-P, performance improvement plan. You need to get your employee on a performance improvement plan. I know some of you managers out there don't like to put anything in writing because you feel it's too, you know, uncool and your team's not going to respect you. Maybe you're buddy buddy with this person you're 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 you know reprimanding. I don't care what the reason is. Put together a performance improvement plan. Get it on paper because you never know when that employee is going to turn on you, decide they don't respect you anymore. They don't want to work for you or they just don't want to work for this organization. Maybe they find a different company, different job they want to work for and they're going to start Breaking the policies again. They're going to start, or should I should say, stop following your directive. So you have in writing what they need to improve on, and what happens if they don't? And you can quickly get rid of them, and you have it all on file. Now, the important thing, though, at this point, is you need to say, Tim, Sally, John, whoever the employee is, here's this performance improvement plan. Let's go through it together. At the end of the plan, you're going to say, Sally, now I really appreciate our conversation. You've really you've opened up to me and you've told me that you're going to change. So 
that is why I have this performance improvement plan. I'm gonna follow, I'm gonna follow up with you each week on your progress, but I need to know right now. Do you plan on following this performance plan? Do you plan on meeting or exceeding this plan? Because, so before you say anything, because if you don't, if you have no intentions putting any effort into this performance improvement plan, if you, if you have no intention in improving, I don't want you to waste my time and I don't want to waste your time. So if that's the case, I'd rather have you flip this performance improvement plan over on the back and write your two weeks notice. But if you want to improve like I think you do, I want you to sign, I want you to review this and sign it. And you hand them the performance improvement plan. So guess what? They're gonna do one or two things. One, they're gonna sign, they're gonna be better for it, and so will you. Or two, they're gonna write their two weeks notice. I've I tell you, I've had plenty of employees that have written their two weeks notice on the back of an employment a performance improvement plan, and we are both better for it. But most of my employees that went through this process with me, they became some of my best, my best performers, my, my best team members that got promoted time after time. It's just because we weren't on the same page in the beginning. They didn't understand the importance of my directive. They didn't understand the vision at the time. And this, this conversation helped realign their values with my values, their beliefs with mine, their actions with mine, and it was a win-win. So that is how you have difficult conversations. That's how you have someone that will improve after that plan, after you have a, a difficult conversation. And that is how you'll have someone that will give you their two weeks notice if they don't want to. It's that simple. So I hope this helps you. I challenge you. If you're putting off a difficult conversation, go through this process. Review the employee file, set up the meeting, write down your questions, write down the three possible answers they're going to give you from hot to cold and in the middle for each question that you ask. Really have a desired outcome that you want, that you're looking for, good or bad. Bring that employee in, control the conversation, control your emotions, and at the end of the day, build a high performance team. Thanks for watching this training. I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Thank you.